So we're going to continue our work on hypothesis testing with making our decisions. Now, one way that you can make a decision about a null and alternative hypothesis is with the p-value that we just practiced finding. There's a couple sayings that the author is fond of, and I kind of like them too. Good mnemonics. Extra credit if you can spell mnemonic. Uh, and hint, it doesn't start with uh, uh, an N. Um, in any case, if the p-value is low, H0 must go. Translated. Um, if P is your p-value is less than alpha, alpha is your level of significance, then, uh, then reject H0. Reject H0. That's what that means. Got to get rid of H0 if the p-value is less than alpha. On the flip side of things, if your p-value isn't small, if your p-value is high, H0 will fly. Meaning you're going to let it go. It'll fly. Why away? Or you're not going to reject it. So if P is greater than alpha, fail to reject H0. You're just going to say, okay, well, we didn't prove H0 was false, so we're just going to accept it. Just like a jury. You didn't prove the defendant was guilty, so yeah. You know, we find the defendant not guilty. So that's what's going to go on with your p value. That's how we're going to use it. We're going to use it to make decisions. And the, the wonderful thing about understanding p values is that if you understand what p values are, then you can start reading a lot of a um, lot of journals and other articles that reference statistics because you can look at the p value and make your own subjective decisions. Now, as a reminder, this alpha is your level of significance. Remember, we used alpha to create a confidence level. One minus alpha is your confidence level. Those values have to be given to you or assume they're one of these. And the value you're going to choose depends on what happens if you make a wrong decision. So let me talk about that. And we'll draw ourselves a little square and take a look at all the thing, things that can happen. So our null hypothesis, H0 is, I guess I should have put the little dots here. It could be true or it could be false. We don't know which. But independent of them being true or false, or at least hopefully not too independent, but independent of that, we need to make our decision. And we've got one of two decisions. We can reject H0 or not. You can fail to reject H0. So these are our decisions. This is what's really true about H0. We don't know what's going on here. We're just going to make our best guess. Now, of these four possibilities, two of them are correct decisions. Can anyone point to where one correct decision would be? What corner? Upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right? Where would you find a correct decision? The lower right. All right, the lower right. If H0 is false and you reject it, you're getting rid of it, that's a correct decision. Nice. There's one more correct decision. Does anyone know where that one would be? Top left. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Top left. This would also be a correct decision. That's because if H0 is true, we don't want to reject it. We want to keep it. 
Now, the other two things are errors. This is a type one error. And it's exactly what you see here. H not is true, but you reject it. You're like, nah, sorry, don't think it's true. That can happen. It does happen. Anyone want to guess what this one's called? Go way out on a limb. What would you I guess? Fail. There you go. That's a type two error. That's when uh, H not is false, but we fail to reject it. We should be getting rid of the null hypothesis, but we don't. We're like, eh, you know, we, we can't, can't get rid of it. Didn't prove him guilty is effectively what this is like. <clears throat> now a little bit more notation on those things. Um, we talk about the probabilities that these will happen. And this is gonna start bringing back some of this other stuff here. So the probability of a type one error so probability of a type one error is alpha. And that's the same alpha level of significance that you've seen before. It's your probability of rejecting H naught when H naught is true. All right. Probability of a type two error. This one we haven't seen before, but it's gonna to continue to build up your Greek alphabet. That'd be a beta. We're not really gonna work with beta in this class. I will show you one example that you'll find in the homework that works with beta, but beyond that, um, you're not really gonna see beta much uh, in this context. It's just tough. Now these decisions that we're gonna make, you know, basically, let me remind you, you're gonna reject H naught when the p-value is less than alpha, and you're gonna to fail to reject H naught when the p-value is greater than alpha. I have never in all my years actually seen the p-value land on alpha. It just doesn't happen. Um, if it did, you could just report the p-value and let people make their own decision where they wanna make the decision. It depends on the consequences of a type one error. If you're just trying to decide whether or not you think the, the mean age of students taking a stat class is 22 or not, the consequences aren't that high. But if you're building, you know, some kind of a system to protect, uh, protect voting data, and you're testing it, you want to make sure that you're not making an error. So you'd want to keep your value of alpha pretty low to prevent a type one error, you know, assuming that you, know, you had such a thing. But you want to account for the consequences of these errors in deciding the level of alpha. <sighs> so let's, let's try and understand type one and type two errors and practice, you know, saying what they mean. That would be here type one and type two errors. What example are we on now? Uh, G, so this would be example G. Okay. I'm continuing on from our last video. So here's your original claim. The proportion of people who write with their left hand is equal to 0.27. So let's start by putting down that original claim in symbols. So our original claim. The 
is P equals 0 0.27. I think it's much lower than that. I think it's more like 11% or something like that. And there was a recent bit of research that talked about why evolution has kept around lefties. And they had a nice mathematical model that showed something about you know, competitiveness. And I don't know about our current president, but before that, five out of the last six presidents, and I don't know about President Trump, five out of the last six presidents were lefties. So if you're a lefty, good on you. Our original claim is P is 0.27. Is that gonna be part of our null or alternative hypothesis? Alternative. No. Null. No, sorry. Yeah, that's gonna be the null hypothesis. What's in the alternative hypothesis? It's not equal. equal. Not equal to, great. So if you're actually trying to find a P value, and it's not this P, but a different P value, this would be a two tail test. That's okay, we're not going there. What we're trying to decide is which one of these statements reflects a type one error. Now let me look back for us here. And I guess I'm gonna to need to go farther back. A type one error happens when H naught is true and you reject H naught. So that's kind of like a definition. Um, type one, um, H naught is true. but rejected. This is a definition. We're gonna to need to say it in words that correspond to this. So let's see what, what we think. We've got a couple possibilities here. Reject the claim that the proportion of people who write with their left hand is 0.27 when the proportion is actually 0.27, et cetera. Now, there's a couple of these that we can reject. We can just say, you know what? These don't work. Is it the reject ones or the fail ones? Which one of these can we get rid of in trying to decide which one of these is actually representative of a type one error? The fail. fail. Yeah, the fail. Because in a type one error, you're rejecting H naught, even though H naught is true. So we can get rid of those two right away. So right away, you've increased your odds tremendously in terms of guessing the right one. But let's do more than guess. Your turn to pick it up. Which one of these A or C is the correct statement. A. I've got a vote for A. A. And a second. Anyone wanna go for C? All right, good on you not, for, not going for C. Yeah, you're rejecting the claim that the proportion of people with, who write with their left hand is 0.27. That's perfect because what you're doing is you're rejecting H naught right there. That's what that's saying. Uh, when the proportion actually is 0.27. So what it's saying is that, yeah, H naught is true, but you're rejecting it. That's perfect. So. Um, so how did we know that it, type one HO was true, but we rejected it? How did we get to that conclusion? because they told you that you're making a type one error. Okay. So a type one error happens when H naught is true, but you reject it. Okay, and that was you. No, that's a good question. That was on our sheet here. That's where it came from. There's that H naught is true, but you reject it. So the next thing we're gonna work with is a type two error which is H naught is false, but we fail to reject it. So 
the defendant is guilty, but we fail to convict him. All right. So try like the last one to eliminate a couple of these. See if you can eliminate two of them and then decide between those remaining two. Okay, somebody tell me which one of these I can just get rid of right away. C and D. C and D? Yeah, because in a type two error, you're not rejecting anything. In a type two error, you fail to reject. So we can get rid of C and D right away. All right, thank you. Now, amongst the remaining two, which one looks correct? D. A. We got to vote for B. Oh, it's one to one. One here, one here. A. a. Uh oh, A is starting to run away. Let's take a look and see what A is saying. We fail to reject. Now, both of these. Two start out the same. Fail to reject the proportion of people right with the left hand is 0.27. All right, that's saying the first part. We fail to reject it. The second part, though, has to say something about. Um, where is it? The second part has to say something about what's true. Um, so we're right here. Second part must say that you know the alternative hypothesis is actually false. So if the alternative hypothesis is actually false, or excuse me, the, pardon me, not the alternative hypothesis, the null hypothesis, null hypothesis is actually false is what the rest of this should be saying. So let's see there. When the proportion of people is actually different than 0.27, there it is. It's saying that, you know what? The null hypothesis is wrong. It's actually different than 0.27. So there, the second part of this is saying that H naught is false. It's just saying it in words. So once again, the answer is gonna be A. A for both of those. We'll do a couple more like that to finish this. Uh, I'll mostly finish up this section. Comments or thoughts on type one and type two errors before I leave this example. Okay, well, the next one you're gonna have to do a little bit more on your own. So if you're unsure about something here, get some help. Okay. Uh, Let's see. So we'll move on, we'll call this example H. And like all these, we have to start out with what's the original claim. So let me scroll down a little bit here. There we go. Identify type one, type two errors here. Um, the percentage of households with internet access is less than 60%. So we'll start with our original claim. And that original claim is gonna be P is less than 0 0.60. Now, where's that original claim go? H-O or H-A? 
Nice, the alternative, P is less than 0 0.60. Good, someone else for the null hypothesis? Greater than or equal to 0 0.60. Thanks, Jalal. Greater than or equal to 0 0.60, nice. So once again, we need to decide what we think about our type one error and our type two error. Type one error, keep in mind, that means that we're rejecting H naught even though it's true. That's what's happening. So this is true, but we reject it. In a type two error, this is true, but we fail to reject this. So we conclude that H naught is true, even though HA is true. So those are your type one and type two errors. Approach this the same way we did the other ones. And that is try and eliminate a couple of these and then decide between the remaining two which ones you like. So, like the last one, we're going to start out by seeing if we can eliminate a couple. If we're trying to find a type one error, and a type one error, what happens? You're rejecting the hypothesis. Yeah, we're rejecting the null hypothesis, even though it's true. So right away, that allows us to eliminate A and D. It can't be those because they say fail to reject. So, all right, so we've cut our work down in half. It says reject the null hypothesis that the percentage of households with internet access is equal to 0 0.60 when that percentage is actually equal to 0 0.60. Mm, yeah, that's looking good. Let me remind you once again that even though I write it like this, in the book and on my math lab, you'll see P equals 0 0.60. That's the way they're gonna write this. Personally, I think this is a little bit more user-friendly because it's just a little bit easier to look at it and say, okay, yeah, uh, one or the other, heads or tails. It just has a better feel to it. But that's what they're gonna think of and write in the book. So if we um, take our exam on my math lab, would we have to put the equal sign for that too? Probably. Okay. Uh, I think you'll figure it out when you do the homework. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I didn't take the time to do the problems on my math lab. Shame on me. I probably should have, but um, I, don't know. I didn't. Okay. Well, the good thing is I don't think you can see me really blushing on the camera too much. Let's look at our type one error then. So type one errors, you're going to reject H naught, even though it's true. So here we are, uh, reject the null hypothesis when that percentage actually equals 60%. So basically that's saying that H naught is true. So that would be our type one error. So it would be B. Mm. Are we in agreement on that one? Okay, uh, let's finish this up then with our type two error. So we wanna find, yeah, identif identify a type two error. And again, we're gonna do the same thing, but just as a, a quick reminder here, a type two error means that H naught is false, but we fail to reject H naught, meaning, you know, even though we should have rejected H naught because it's false, we didn't. So that's your type one, excuse me, type two error. Let's go back here. <clears throat> kind of like the other two. We can, uh, we can get rid of a couple of these things. Which ones can I get rid of? The ones that start with the reject? Yep. 
let's get rid of the ones that start with reject because we're not rejecting anything. You fail to reject if you're making a type one, or excuse me, type two error. Now, both of these are the same up till this part. Both of these are saying you're failing to reject the null hypothesis, which is uh, households, 60% of households have internet access. But it's the conclusion part that's gonna distinguish between the two of those. Now, in an alternative, excuse me, in a type two error, it's the alternative hypothesis that's true. So which one of these better describes the alternative hypothesis? The first one, C, or the second one, D? And I'll let you look back here in case it's a little easier. Which one describes the alternative hypothesis? Less than. Yeah, less than. So I'd say C. Yep, so C. Thank you. Okay with those. I mean, this is, this is something that is always really, really difficult. The good news for you is that you're at least given choices here. If this was a test in which I just wrote out the problem and said state of type two or type one error, you have to figure it all out on your own. So that'd be even harder than what this is. Um, okay. Let's finish up with the power of the test. I mentioned that a little bit ago. Uh, let's see, was it in the first section? The first part of this, maybe. Where did that go? Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it was just a little bit ago. So the power of a test is going to be related to beta. The power of the test is going to be one minus beta. So one minus beta equals the power of a test. And, you know, obviously you'd like to have this as high as possible. It's not always possible. But, you know, kind of a way to think of this is if, if H0 is false, it's the probability that you're going to reject H0. So that's what you'd like to see. There's going to be one problem in the homework like this. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. It's not something I'm going to put on the test because not really going to work with the power of a test too much, but that's what this is. Fill in the blank. This one right here uh, is going to fill in with power. And you get a drop down menu. You have several things to choose between, and that'll be one of them. <clears throat> now for the second kind of part of this, Let's try and parse through here and pick up a few relevant facts. There's a lot of information here, and that's just a little bit regrettable. In a clinical trial of a drug intended to help people stop smoking, 126 subjects were treated for, with a drug for 13 weeks. All right, that's fluff so far. 10 subjects experienced abdominal pain. If someone claims that no more than 8% of the drug's users experience abdominal pain, so let's look at that right there. No more than 8% um, experience abdominal pain. That claim is supported with a hypothesis test construct, or conducted at the 0.05 significance level. We're going to use 0.19 as the alternative value for P. So, OK. The power of the test is going to be 0.95. And I'm kind of running out of colors here. Is this going to obscure that too much? And eh, it does. Let me just kind of circle it here. So the power of the test is 0.95. So that's good to know. Let me just circle that. The 
the power of the test here shows that there's a 95% chance, so that's what we're gonna fill in here, 95% chance of rejecting which hypothesis? Which one do you think? What's well, the only hypothesis that gets rejected? HO, that's the only one that you reject. We're rejecting the hypothesis that the p-value, or that p equals 0 0.08. Now that 0 0.08 is coming from our claim here. That's where that 0 0.08 is coming from. So let's put that here, 0 0.08. When the proportion is actually, and then here's our other part, the 0.19. That's what they told us was the alternative value here, 0.19. That is, if the proportion of people who actually experience abdominal pain is 0.19, then there's a 95% chance, and that goes back to the power of your test, that the Proportion of users who experience abdominal pain is greater than um, 0.8. So a lot of little stuff there. Uh, take advantage of the, the help that's offered with this question. Look back at this example online. Talk to Mimi, talk to me. Look at some help on these things. Uh, but there's only one question like this, I think, in the homework. So I'm hoping you'll be okay. I think it's time for a break. What do you guys think? Agreed. All right. Let me stop things here then.